some people, you know, you're always gonna have the naysayers out there. They're over there like, they're just drunk. And Peter stands up and he said, these people aren't drunk. It's nine in the morning, you guys. Hey fam, it's Rachel. Today on Crack Your Bible, I wanted to give you a little bit of an update because right now I am currently working on an episode about dining at the table of demons because there are way too many Christians out there that think that they are going to ride the fence. They're going to show up to God's table and they're going to go party at the table of demons. And that's not how it works. So before we get into this, let's... Make sure you hit subscribe with the bell with the parentheses so you're notified of a new gospel message because of course, Satan and YouTube and Google, they're one and the same, but they do not want you to know the gospel and they will never notify you of a new gospel message unless you hit subscribe with the bell with the parentheses. So let's get started. So I am currently working on a video about dining at the table of demons because unfortunately people got a real twisted. They're like, oh, does this mean that I can never eat with a person who's not a Christian? What are you talking about? Jesus ate with other people. This is why he was called a drunkard and a friend of sinners. I don't know how you think that you're going to share the gospel with people if you never eat with anybody who is not a believer. Like, what? Ugh. This is why I have to make this video because too many people got it twisted. Dining at the table of demons is demons, not your unbelieving family members. Your unbelieving family members aren't demons, you guys. Come on now. So anyway, that's what I'm working on right now. But in the meantime, y'all got some homework to do because one of the big biblical feast days is coming up and that is Shavuot. So for 2019, that is going to be on June 8th at sundown and it is going to go through June 10th, 2019. So of course, the dates always change. So you need to go on Google and type Type in when is whatever biblical holiday you're looking up plus whatever year it is and that's how you're going to find the date. Do not leave a comment down below asking when is it this year? When is it? Type that question right into Google. So let's talk about Shavuot and Pentecost because I already have done videos about this and you guys can check out the Shavuot playlist right up here and um, in the meantime Let's talk a little bit about what Shavuot is. Now, Shavuot is the Hebrew word for that holiday. Uh, Pentecost is the Greek name for that holiday. And it is 50 days after the Seder of Passover. So Pentecost, 50 days, seven weeks after Passover. And we know seven is God's number of completion. And you see sevens throughout the entire Bible. So anyway, Shavuot is one of the three pilgrimage festivals in the biblical calendar, not the Jewish calendar, the biblical calendar. And remember, all of these biblical festivals point to Jesus. These are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Remember, Paul spoke about this in Colossians 2. So everybody that's like, well, I'm not Jewish. Be quiet. Like, please go back to sleep. So <laughs> let's talk about this. So Shavuot was a festival that people uh, celebrated, and it was about God giving the law to Moses. Remember, Moses was on Mount Sinai. God gave him the Ten Commandments. He came down from Mount Sinai. Everybody was eating at the table of demons. They have the golden calf over there. And they're, oh, well, this is going to be our God. What are you doing? What are you doing? So what did Moses do? He broke the Ten Commandments. He went back up and God made another Ten Commandments. Same rules, different tablets. So anyway, you know, God's people, it seems like over and over and over again, they're always messing up. They're always trying to hoe after other gods. And it's just like, at what point are y'all going to get it through your heads that you need to stop following other gods? It drives me nuts. But anyway, that's what Shavuot is. It's celebrating uh, God giving the law to Moses. And not only that, but they would also bring the first fruits of their spring harvest, the grain harvest, uh, to God. 
Now the reason that Shavuot is an important holiday for Christians is because this is the day that we're celebrating the Holy Spirit coming upon believers. Remember Jesus said that he is never going to leave us, he's never going to forsake us, but he was going to be sending us a helper, the Holy Spirit, to guide us in all truth. And at Pentecost, at Shavuot, this is when the Holy Spirit came because over in Acts 2, we have everybody gathered together in Jerusalem from every tribe. They're all speaking their own native languages and the Holy Spirit, as they're gathered in Jerusalem for Shavuot, came and fell upon them. And all of them started to hear the gospel in their own native tongue. And some people, you know, you're always going to have the naysayers out there. They're over there like, they're just drunk. And Peter stands up and he said, these people aren't drunk. It's nine in the morning, you guys. They're not drunk. And this is what I want people to understand. This is part of speaking in tongues. We are celebrating that the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ according to John 1 17. This is what we're celebrating. We're not celebrating going back to the old law. We don't honor God by going back to Torah and following the law. And if you think that that honors God, y'all need to read Galatians, the entire book of Galatians. Don't even think that you're going to go back to the law and still worship Jesus. We're not going to uh, go back to that old covenant because when Jesus died on the cross, there's a new covenant. There has to be a shedding of blood and that's what happened for this new covenant to come about. So this is something that we celebrate and unfortunately, we have a lot of false teachers. You know, there are a lot of false teachers out there. We were promised that false teachers would come in like wolves among sheep and they're gonna teach all sorts of doctrines of demons. And one of these doctrines of demons is cessationism. And cessationism says that the gifts of the Holy Spirit have ceased, that they died out with the apostles. The reason that this is a doctrine of demons is because, you know, we've been talking about communion and that's why we talked about Melchizedek, who is the pre-incarnate Jesus. And for everyone that's gonna be like, no, it's not, we've already covered it. Check out this playlist right up here. Uh, links are always in the description box below. But you know, we've been talking about communion and fellowshipping with God and how communion is part of that armor of God because communion is recognizing the word of God. And what is the word of God? It's the sword of the spirit according to Ephesians 6. So when we are suited up with the full armor of God, we don't just have one piece of armor. We don't just have one weapon against Satan. We have many, you know, the weapons of our warfare are not of this world, but they are mighty through God to tear down spiritual strongholds. And we have to recognize that one of these parts, one of these pieces, of our weaponry against Satan is speaking in tongues. And this is why false teachers don't want you to speak in tongues. This is why they make up bogus claims like, we'll not all speak in new tongues because they deliberately twist Paul's words in Corinthians to make people believe that no, they don't have the gift of speaking in tongues. And this is one of the biggest lies of the enemy. They deliberately lie to you because if they can lie to you, you're not going to realize the authority that you have in Jesus Christ. You're not going to understand the tools that you have to tear down spiritual strongholds. And if you don't know what tools that you have, you're not going to know how to effectively combat your enemy. And who is our enemy? Satan, Shaitan, the adversary. So of course he's going to promote this doctrine of demons that no, you don't have these weapons against me. Girl, please, this is why we crack our Bible. So this is what I want people to understand because there's so many false teachers out there saying, you don't have that gift. You don't have that gift. Oh, that's just babbling. Oh, speaking in new tongues just means speaking different languages. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. These signs will accompany those who believe they will speak in new tongues. That doesn't mean that all Christians are bilingual, trilingual, whatever, because if that's what it meant, I'm sorry to tell you, most Christians then are, you know, not actually saved. If that was the prerequisite that you had to be bilingual, like that's the dumbest argument I've, 
it's getting real stupid. But anyway, um, you have to understand that there's different types of speaking in tongues. And when you look at my show World playlist, you're going to see all of my videos about speaking in tongues. And this is something that you have to understand. You have to get it in on the inside. There are different types of speaking in tongues. And when people will say, and they will misquote Paul and say, well, not all speak in new tongues. Paul was talking about your administration within the body of Christ. Because as a church, you know, we build each other up and everybody has a different gift. Some teach, that's what I do. Some have words of knowledge, some prophesy, some speak in new tongues, some do the interpretation of tongues. So within the whole body of Christ, when you are in a group setting, not all speak in new tongues. You know, everybody has a different gift for edifying, for building up the body of Christ. But remember, there's four different types of speaking in tongues. And one of those um, types of speaking in tongues is your personal prayer language between you and God. And not even the demons can understand it. And every single believer, every believer has this gift. That is why Jesus says that these signs will accompany those who believe. They will speak in new tongues. Jesus wouldn't say this if you did not have that. So Christians, this is what I want you to understand. There is a concerted effort by false teachers, people who promote doctrines of demons to tell you that, oh, oh no, gifts aren't for today. Speaking in tongues isn't for today. Oh, it's actually just speaking in other languages. I'm sorry to tell you, but you don't speak every language. So what sounds like gibberish or babbling to you, you have no idea what possible language you could be speaking. So don't be so ignorant and say, oh, well, that's just babbling. That's just babbling. Yeah, well, the people over in Acts 2 thought that people were just drunk and babbling and they weren't because other people who spoke these very uh, random languages they understood in their own language. So just because you don't understand it doesn't mean that there's not somebody else in the audience that does not understand because there, there is when we're talking about your church administration. So this week, before we celebrate Shavuot, we celebrate Pentecost, I want you to watch my entire playlist on this festival because there's too many Christians that don't understand its importance. Just like so many Christians today, they don't understand the importance of communion. And this is why we are uncovering the truth and the power behind this because this is what Jesus talked about when he tells us that he gives us authority. We have the authority to do even greater things than he did on this earth. So Christians, it's time that we stop listening to the false teachers that tell us all sorts of lies. Oh, that's not for you. Oh, it's not for you. No, oh, that's not for you. It is for you and it's time that you start utilizing it and just saying, you know, get out of here to the false teachers. So that's what I wanted to share with you. But in the meantime, you know, I am in San Diego right now. You probably can hear the airplanes in the background, but um, I did want to say something really quick because I had a meetup here in San Diego. I told you guys about it. All of my meetups are listed down in the Eventbrite link. So when people are like, oh, well, are you having a meetup here? How about you do your due diligence and go look at the whole roster of where my meetups are? That literally drives me crazy and it makes me wonder if you can't figure out how to find <laughs> where my meetups are going to be when they're all listed and they're linked, how closely are you cracking your Bible? I, it really makes me wonder. But anyway, so I had this meetup in San Diego. People purchased tickets and only one person showed up even though other people bought tickets, like they just flaked. So I was really stoked to hang out with Marlene. She drove all the way from LA after working a 12 hour shift. She made sure her car like got an oil change and everything before. Like I was very happy that she made all of the effort to come down there, but uh, we had lunch at Seaport Village right on the water. It felt like a fancy date or something. We had dessert in the plaza and we actually hung out even longer than the meetup was supposed to be because it was just like really cool being able to hang out one-on-one. -on -one. But I just want to say something. I want to say that 
I get tired of people complaining about, oh, I, I don't have anybody to fellowship with. I can't find a good church. Because there hasn't been a single meetup that I have had where people have not flaked. Christians, you can't complain about lack of fellowship if you're not willing to show up. So, if you buy a ticket, you better show up because you never know. It might just be you and me there. And if it is, it's everybody else's loss. So anyway, my next meetup is going to be on June 16th, 2019 in Phoenix, Arizona. And you can purchase your ticket at the Eventbrite link down in the description box below. And you can also get merchandise for those meetups at our Teespring store, which is also linked down in the comments. And you'll also see a bar across the bottom of this video on YouTube. But that's what I wanted to share with you. And I hope that you go and share this entire video with the entire world because it's time that Christians woke up. It's time that Christians understood their authority and you know how they can defeat Satan. There's too many Christians getting beaten up by Satan because they don't even realize the weapons that are at their disposal. So that's what I wanted to share with you and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!